Well, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here today. We see a lot of familiar faces, and some not so familiar, but that's okay. Um, I learn to uh, know who each other is by the time the afternoon is over. Uh, my name is Mike Sella. I'm a commissioner with uh, Clay County. My district is District 1, which the Thrash Orange happens to sit in. I also sit on the Tour of Development Council as the chairman and have for the past six years. And uh, quite honestly, it's uh, really a pleasure to, uh, to be here today and to see uh, how far our community has come along in the, uh, the tourism area. And uh, very proud to have uh, been seated as uh, the chairman six years ago when I first got elected. And, and uh, I'm still there. And, and every, every day and every month is a, a new adventure with tourism in, in Clay County. We're making some great strides thanks to uh, Kimberly and her team. And so uh, this is just another Part of that the tourism is to educate businesses in the community as to how to take advantage of the, of the tourism. Um, I apologize that I won't be able to stay for the entire event because I will be uh, playing tour guide to my son and his family uh, who are in town. And it's been interesting to watch uh, from, from that aspect as to when somebody comes to town, what do they do? Of course, with a couple of teenagers, they have their faces stuck in their phones anyway. <laughs> But I've been quizzing them and, and actually gotten some verbal responses that, um, yes, they, uh, they are looking at places to go and do and, and uh, to do things and, and, and those kind of things. I said, well, you don't need to know those. I'll have you. You're going to ride with me. I know where all these places. But like, you don't know about this place and that place and that. So I've learned some things myself. So on behalf of the uh, Clay County Board of County Commissioners and, and Clay County Tourist Development Council, uh, I would like to welcome you today to this uh, program which will hopefully help your business maximize your presence online, which is uh, where all the aforementioned consumers do their research. You know, back in 2008, 2009, I just started a, a, a business, and um, certainly one of the uh, keys at that time, which was impressed by me, was to uh, you know, get that Google score up as high as you get so that you can move your uh, listing from being on the second or third page to uh, the top half of the first page. And so I worked very hard at that in terms of uh, trying to follow all of the recommendations and uh, we eventually did uh, be able to crack that first page and that was very important because uh, as we learned, uh, folks don't have a lot of patience when they're doing searching online so whatever is easiest found is usually something that uh, benefits and, and so we were able to do that. But unfortunately, we didn't have a, a, a tourism operation at that time that was as sophisticated as it is now. I think, quite honestly, I don't think everybody was as sophisticated about what Google could do or not do for you uh, as we are today. And so uh, those rudimentary search engine optimizations that uh, we used to take to uh, be able to move up the, uh, the chain, whether it was uh, with additional reviews or uh, postings or you know, all the things that we had to do, uh, the keywords, uh, I remember spending hours upon hours uh, doing that and trying to learn that. So, and it did turn out to be uh, an important part of our business. And so that's one of the reasons that we're offering that, uh, this uh, particular set seminar, because things have changed since those early days of uh, trying to figure out how to Google and uh, how to make it work for you. Uh, the county's tourism team works hard to tell the story about uh, Clay County and what it has to offer and, and essentially who lives here in, in Clay County. And, uh, but the truth is that uh, it takes all of us working together to make a difference in the county's online presence. Uh, U.S. business owners see success from the Google business, whether it's uh, your profile or whether it's Yelp or TripAdvisor, and uh, you help tell the story of Clay County. And that helps attract more people here and uh, makes them want to stay longer. And the more they stay, the better off everybody is. Now, online presence helps the consumer in the research phase of their vacation planning, but it also serves them when they're in market here experiencing Clay County. The better the online experience, the better chance you have to see them come to your door and do business. And so that's the goal of our county's tourism team, uh, to help your businesses grow with new market share or repeat customer called The Visitor. Now, don't be scared. I think there was a, a science fiction movie called The Visitor. These are good visitors. We want them here, right? And so they don't use the same credit card, they don't come from the same place, but they are extremely valuable to our local economy. And so not only do they help your business grow, uh, but when uh, they purchase things here in the community, whether that's as simple as stopping and buying a bottle of water, filling up their car, stopping into a restaurant, uh, attending an event, 
whatever it is, it is valuable to our local economy and does have an impact. Um, so that uh, you know sums up to, to be really uh, honest. Uh, that's why we're here, and that's why we love uh, tourism because not only do they invest in our, our county, but they help us build roads and infrastructure and more with sales tax and, and other things like that. The good thing is visitors help us pay for the items, but after a few days they go home, and so that is what makes tourism uh, such a valuable commodity for uh, the community. Uh, I think at the last survey that we saw and the numbers that we saw, I think it's about $240 a piece that we're saving uh, in terms of paying taxes because of tourism, because of people that are coming in and spending. So that's that's less taxes that we have to worry about taking out of our own pocket and, um, and they're helping us pay that. Also, in terms of sales tax, it's about 40% non-residents that pay uh, the sales tax. So out of a, every dollar sales tax money that we earn, which we use to, to buy capital, uh, whether it's capital projects, whether it's fire station, library, paving roads, buying uh, police cars, fire trucks, uh, they're paying 40% of that. So through our partnership with uh, Visit Florida, the tourism team was able to conduct a Google audit through a cooperative marketing program with Miles Partnership. And uh, we are pleased to have a representative from uh, Miles Partnership here today. And uh, she is going to help us improve our online presence. She's got a, uh, she's in charge of destination optimization, which if I had to say that every day, I think I'd uh, come up with a shorter title. I'd do one of those tiny URLs. You know, you do that to it, because that's, uh, that's quite a mouthful to have to introduce yourself with all the time. But we're very pleased to have her here. And uh, she is from Miles Partnership, and I'd like you to uh, give her a big round of applause as a Clay County welcome. Please welcome Kim Palmer. We did kind of consider uh, the DO team, but the DOE team didn't seem like a good name for us, so uh, we, we still do the whole mouthful. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for being here uh, this afternoon. I'm, I'm really excited to share uh, our agenda today, which um, requires turning on the clicker. There we go. Um, I've worked with Miles Partnership for 26 years now. Uh, it was my first job out of college when I had to start by explaining to people what a website was and why it was important uh, to the success of their business. Uh, I've worked in website development uh, for destinations as well as hospitality uh, marketing. Uh, I was our company's director of search engine optimization for several years before we started the destination optimization program. Uh, this is my crew. Uh, I'm based out of uh, Sarasota, but actually I've spent quite a, a bit of time in Clay County and in St. John's County over the years. My husband's best friend uh, grew up in Green Cove Springs uh, and used to work for the city of St. Augustine. So. Uh, my husband actually proposed to me in the Tower of the Lightner Museum, uh, so I have a very dear ties uh, to, uh, to this area. Um, our organization uh, works with Google across a lot of different um, platforms, including education, uh, search engine optimization, uh, as well as paid advertising. Uh, but my little corner of the organization, uh, destination optimization, is uh, focused on helping organizations like the Clay County Office of Tourism to uh, understand what their destination looks like beyond their own channels and how it can be improved across those channels. We've worked with over 200 uh, destinations around the country, uh, as well as a few in the South Pacific. Uh, and part of that program is doing audits of the businesses in the community to understand uh, who might be missing information, who hasn't claimed their profiles on these platforms, uh, and providing training sessions uh, like this one uh, today. Um, so we're here because we really want to uh, help you maximize your exposure and your engagement with your customers across these platforms. It's going to help everyone, uh, your business, uh, the visitors, and um, your destination uh, as a whole. Now, as a part of this program, my team at Miles Partnership is here to help you. So in addition to today's session, we have something available called Office Hours uh, with our team. Uh, if you um, can scan this QR code or um, the team will share this link uh, later, 
Uh, this is a link to Calendly, where you can book a Zoom call with our program specialists here at Miles. So if you need some help claiming your Google business profile, you have a, a, an obstacle you've come across in that platform or just a question that we don't cover here today, uh, we can book some time one-on-one -on -one with you, do a screen share, help you through the claiming process, whatever it is you need uh, in that program. So that's all a part of this program, absolutely free. Uh, our organization does not sell products and services to individual businesses. This is all a free service uh, provided uh, by Kimberly's team as part of the Visit Florida program. Uh, so four things we'll cover today. Uh, just an overview of um, what we seek to accomplish with this program and why it's important to your business. Uh, talk about claiming your uh, business on the key pro uh, platforms. Uh, and then we'll uh, dive into five fundamentals for a successful online profile. Uh, and we'll have time at the end uh, for your questions. Um, feel free though, we're a small group if you want to raise your hand as we go uh, with a question I don't mind uh, answering. Uh, we are recording this for folks who were not able to attend today. Um, so if you uh, have friends in the industry who uh, should hear this information, they'll have access to that recording. Uh, no way. So, your online business presence. Uh, if you have ever planned a vacation online, the process looks a little bit like this. Uh, it's uh, hundreds of digital touch points uh, between the idea of taking a trip and the actual execution. Uh, as a business owner, you control some of those steps in that journey, either through your website, your social media, your advertising. Uh, and on those platforms, you own and control uh, the messaging, the analytics, et cetera. Uh, but the customer experience extends way beyond your own channels. Uh, platforms like Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, <coughs> Instagram are all part of that travel planning experience and places where customers are likely to encounter your business, often for the first time. Uh, we focus a lot of this training on the Google platform because, frankly, it is the largest and most influential of the platforms. Uh, Google's research tells us that uh, Google is making four billion, with a B, uh, connections between consumers and local businesses every single month. Um, so that's where your customers and your eyeballs are. Um, there's a very good chance that your Google business profile is the very first thing a potential customer is seeing about your business before they uh, continue to your website or do other research. Um, and when we are using the Google platform or the Google Maps platform to do a search or to research what's surrounding us online, um, what comes up in search, uh, when we search for the name of a type of business and a particular destination, is called the local pack. Um, I know you've seen this probably in search results, it's usually a little map and three or four business listings that show up there. Uh, it's usually just below the advertising, but it's actually above the organic uh, website result listings. Uh, so the number one question we get asked is, how do I get my business into that local pack and that top three or four that is uh, visible there. Well, there are three factors uh, that are in play as to which businesses uh, Google is gonna show in a local pack search result. And those are distance, relevance, and prominence. Um, now, the first one, distance, you don't have any control over. So we don't really need to worry about that one other than to be aware that Google is looking at either where the device that the search is run from is located, or if I select, if I put in the name of a specific city, Google's actually gonna drop a pin in the dead center of that city or county and go out from there when determining distance. So at the end of the day, we don't have any control over the distance, but we can control relevance and prominence, and those are two things we will talk about a little bit here uh, today. This is a, a study that's been going on since 2013 by an organization called Bright Local. And what they're looking at are what factors are influencing which businesses show up in that local pack of search results. Uh, and it's a lot of colorful spaghetti here, um, but the important headline 
is that you can see even from the very beginning, uh, Google Business Profile signals, which basically means the completeness and quality of a Google Business Profile, has always been the number one signal. But it's gone from being less than 25% of the influence to over 36% of the influence. So it is, by a landslide, the most influential uh, piece of what is showing up in the local app. Google's research uh, has also found that business profiles on Google that are up to date and current are almost three times as likely to be considered reputable by a customer, 70% uh, more likely to attract a visit to a location, and 50% more likely to lead to a purchase. Uh, I wanted to share a little news in the Google Business Profile uh, arena uh, before we go on uh, to talk about planning and some of the top tips here. Uh, for years, you may have been calling this Google My Business. Uh, and at the beginning of this year, Google uh, did a flip on us and made a name change where they are no longer using the term Google My Business. Uh, it's now Google Business Profiles, which speaking of things that are hard to uh, roll off your tongue, Google Business Profiles uh, is certainly one of them, and G GBP doesn't make uh, a very good acronym uh, either. Uh, but the more important headline out of that announcement was that Google uh, has retired the app for managing your Google Business Profile online. Uh, they announced it at the beginning of the year, they actually pulled it out of the Play Store and the Apple Store uh, in June. Um, so that app is uh, really no longer available. So how are we going to manage our, our business profiles? Well, Google really wants us to either be using the search engine results page or the Google Maps product uh, to manage our business listings directly in uh, those products. So uh, we'll talk about claiming your listing, but if you have already claimed your Google business profile, you're going to be logged into the account, uh, the Google account with which you manage that listing. All you have to do is go search and search for your business, and you're going to actually see this uh, new box up here that says your business on Google. And it's going to give you all the tools to update your information, respond to reviews, update photos, and all those things uh, right there in the Google search results uh, page. Uh, we can zoom into this a little bit uh, so you can see that a little more closely here. Um, so as we talk about how to do some of these things, uh, we are going to focus on using the search results page um, interface uh, here. Uh, but there's also another option uh, which is in Google Maps. Um, so if you're in the Google Maps app or on a desktop, Again, log into the account that is, controls your Google business profile. Uh, under the menu here, uh, you're going to see where it says your business or your business profiles. And that's also going to take you into a dialogue where you can manage your information, respond to customers, uh, etc. Um, now, at this time, business.google.com, which is the website uh, with which you can use to manage your profile, is still there. It still works exactly the same uh, as it has. It's just Google's intention is that this uh, tool will ultimately be used by businesses who have multiple business locations or a chain of business locations or by someone like an organization like ours who is an agency that may be managing uh, multiple locations in one place. Uh, they're really encouraging individual business owners to use the search engine results page or the Google Maps interface to manage their data. Um, basically, they're just taking the app out of the middle of it and then you go directly into your profile. It's meant to be faster uh, and easier for us. Um, now, I know we're focusing today on Google, but I, I do have some things in here just calling out both TripAdvisor, Yelp, and Apple Maps, uh, because your presence on uh, those four platforms in particular really make up the lion's share of your online uh, representation. Your TripAdvisor is unique in its emphasis on reviews um, and its brand recognition. 96% of the traffic that goes to TripAdvisor 
started by somebody searching for TripAdvisor. People use TripAdvisor because they're looking for TripAdvisor. Um, and they're generating uh, about 22 million tourist trips a year. They account for about 10% of the global uh, travel spend. Um, what's unique about TripAdvisor is that on average, their customer reviews are three times longer than any other platform. People really write in-depth reviews when it comes to TripAdvisor results. And their research indicates that that's the type of feedback folks are really looking for when they're choosing accommodations and uh, activities around travel. Um, it says 76% prefer, prefer the long form review um, when they're trying to make those decisions about where to stay and what to do. Um, Yelp is still in the mix. I've had some folks ask me, like, do they really matter? Um, at 178 million visitors monthly, that's still a, a good bit of traffic. Uh, there's still about 45% of customers who say they're going to check a, re a Yelp review uh, before they visit a location. Um, and if they do look at a Yelp review, um, it's 35% likely that they're going to show up at that business within the next 24 uh, hours. Um, <clears throat> most of what is happening in the Yelp space is related to restaurants, at least as it pertains to travel and tourism. Uh, they do things in, you know, home services and other plumbing and things like that. Uh, but 49% of all the reviews on Yelp are for restaurants. Um, and their hotel-related searches uh, tend to be very broad. I'm looking for hotels in a particular market versus a specific hotel um, or versus someone like TripAdvisor where I'm going to look at TripAdvisor before I'm going to run um, that search. Compared to the other platforms, Yelp is most more focused on paid embellishment to your listing. A lot of what is free on Google and on other platforms is a dollar a month, two dollar a month upcharge uh, on Yelp. Things like creating a photo gallery for your business, getting other competitors off of your page. They have a bunch of, of uh, upsells. Uh, on your listing there, um, more so than any of the other platforms. Uh, which isn't to say that's a, a bad thing. I know quite a few businesses who are putting you know, 20 or $30 a month into Yelp and it's worth it to them from uh, the impressions that they get. Um, but just something to be aware of uh, on that platform. You're gonna get a lot of buy this and buy that <laughs> coming at you from, from that point. Um, so at the end of the day, better business profiles are going to drive uh, more exposure and more engagement with our potential customers. Um, the most important thing you need to do to start is to claim your business on these platforms. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you had originally said there was three sites we need to be aware of, TripAdvisor, Yelp, and what was the third one? Um, Google, TripAdvisor, Yelp, and Apple Maps. I guess there's four. I can't count. But <laughs> the, I would say those four um, make up most of where where folks are finding you in the broader online. Um, you know, just also making sure the the visitor uh, visitor bureau website listing is up to date. If you're on the Visit Florida website listing, there's a couple other niches to our industry. Um, but those are the biggest uh, sort of national sites out there. Now, each of these platforms um, does give you a way to claim, to validate that you are the rightful representative of that business, which would give you access to be able to keep your information current. Um, in the audit we did of the businesses in Clay County Tourism, we did find that 80% of the businesses in that audit had claimed their Google business profile. So as an industry, you're doing very well on that front. Uh, there still are about 20% out there who need to uh, do so, um, but 80% is, is, uh, is a very strong result there. Now, I always recommend that you use the Google Maps product uh, when taking a look at your listing and seeing whether it's claimed. Uh, it's a little confusing in search. If, you're, if you go to maps.google.com or the Google Maps app and look for your business um, and go into the about section here in that <coughs> result, if you see this little shield 
and this link that says claim this business, um, then you haven't claimed your listing yet. Um, so what you need to do is with a Google account, uh, which is either a Gmail account for your business or one of your existing website or email address that you have uh, registered with Google, um, and go ahead and click that link and that will start the process. You are going to either receive a postcard in the mail with a uh, code uh, to put in there to complete the verification process. So it's a two-step process. If you claim it, which is raising your hand and saying, yes, I'm the representative, and then there's verification, which is kind of like getting into your online banking account or anything these days that's giving you a code uh, to confirm that they've got the right person on the other end. We are seeing more use of the phone call uh, feature for this versus the silly postcard in the middle, which seems super antiquated uh, at this point, but still is their default uh, for verification. Um, they will call uh, your business number that's listed here and give you that verification code um, that you can put in directly through a phone call uh, as well. If I've already claimed the site, and I never got the postcard, I never got any second level authentication. Mm -hmm. Can I go in and reclaim it again? Is that the process for you? So, so the question was if you have uh, done the claiming and asked for the postcard but it hasn't arrived, uh, what can you do? Um, so you can go back into um, to that listing and there is, a, it will prompt you and say verification, and there, there should be a link there to resend it. Um, you can also engage with the help uh, dialogue that's in that section. Um, they've gotten better with there being real people who respond to that, uh, and sometimes they will give you another option besides the postcard, because uh, we do have people like, they won't send the postcard to a PO box, it has to be a physical address. Um, and so sometimes folks who are in an area that only has P.O. boxes need an alternative. Uh, interestingly, we've been seeing some businesses get claimed by video verification, where they set up uh, basically a time, like a Zoom call time, uh, with you and, and you have to, to you know, show them, like, here's my, my sign outside and my cash register or, or whatever to, to show that you are. In, indeed a uh, legitimate business and business owner. Uh, but if you are having trouble too, feel free to, to set up one of our office hours call to and one of our team members can get on a screen share with you and take a look and try to help one-on-one uh, -on -one as well. Um, on the Yelp uh, platform, uh, there is a, a notation there that says unclaimed when a business hasn't been claimed, or you'll see this, is this your business box uh, on the screen. Uh, either of those is how you will um, begin their verification process. Uh, they are phone-based, so they will be looking to either do a phone call or text to a specific number to verify a Yelp listing. Uh, TripAdvisor is a, a little bit more complicated process because they want everyone on TripAdvisor to be a person. Um, not an organization. Uh, you start at tripadvisor.com slash owners um, and put in your business, um, but you're going to need a TripAdvisor account. Um, and they're going to want to verify your identi identity very, uh, via a phone call. Or interestingly enough, one of their options is to take a credit card. Uh, they don't charge it. Um, but they do uh, verify the, the name on that account to the name that you're registered with um, to determine that you really are who you say you are. How easy is it for someone to access the account information if, if you have a lot of people going on and putting on their credit card? Is that something that's, that will be hacked? Like, is that something where people are comfortable enough to put their card information so they can continue? Um, we definitely have had a lot of business owners uh, cringe at that particular um, ask um, because um, the way TripAdvisor works is everyone needs to be an, a verified individual by name. So I have to be Kim Palmer on TripAdvisor. I can't be 
info at my business on TripAdvisor. They won't allow it. Um, so they, they really just ping the card to match your name and identity to a real person's uh, account. Um, so I, I haven't heard of there being problems with it being hacked necessarily, um, but not everybody's really comfortable putting in their credit card information in here that they don't have to. Uh, but they do have the, the phone uh, options for verification uh, for TripAdvisor as well. Is this the same as I uh, review a lot of restaurants and places that I live in? I can come up with Google Maps and I get reports back from them on that. Remember the people that have looked at it uh, and information like that. Is this the same English? For TripAdvisor or for Google? Google Maps. Um, so Google Maps, in where you manage your Google business profile, there are insights, analytics that are specific to your Google business profile. How many times you showed up in Maps and in Search had requests for directions and all that. So yes, that's specific to just to the Google listing. Uh, and then lastly, Apple. Um, Apple is also a little complicated because you have to have an Apple ID uh, in order to uh, claim your listing, uh, claim your business uh, on Apple. So you do have to set yourself up with an Apple ID first. Uh, and then it's register.apple.com slash places on maps um, to search for your business. Uh, and they uh, will verify either by phone or Apple has an option of uploading official documents like a power bill or an insurance certificate or something like that for verification. Uh, um, one thing I will say about Apple is that of all the platforms, they have the least functionality for a business. Um, <laughs> you can just put in like your address and your hours, and that's about it. They pull their reviews from other platforms. Um, they have been threatening to have bigger, better tools and compete more with Google, but right now there's not a lot available for a business on the Apple platform, but it's still worth claiming it and making sure you at least have ownership of it if you need to, if there is a problem <coughs> with the location or something. Any other questions? So my question on TripAdvisor and Apple, since it's linked to a, a, a person and then later you can add in business information, if that person were to change positions or you got, you know, or leave the company, are you then having to redo all this again and link it to a new person with their email and their with TripAdvisor, uh, it's definitely a good idea to have, and they make it very easy for multiple people to be associated with the business, where Google is actually very much tied to a singular email address being the owner of the location. And so with the Google platform, you do, your, your best interest is to use a like info at your business.com so it isn't tied to an individual. Uh, but TripAdvisor forces it to be an individual, but it also makes it easy for four or five people to have access to that listing. So if one leaves, you're not. Apple also? Um, Is it Apple? I'm not 100% sure. I think so. Yes, sir. I know I need TripAdvisor for my business, but and I had a, an account, and they changed their liability requirements for that business to a million bucks. It doesn't really pay for me to get that. And so they said, we're not going to advertise you for you because you're not to that threshold. Does that sound? Is that specific to advertising or just having a little? I, I haven't heard, I haven't heard that. Well, before, I, I, if I could just have a listing on there, that would be fine. I have never heard that there is an insurance requirement to have a free listing. Like, a, as I understand it, tourism-related businesses are can have a free listing. There gets to be different advertising options and upsells that you can have in them. I had not heard that there's an insurance requirement, but I don't deal with the advertising right. side very much. And Kim, I just wanted to, for those of you who don't know, um, the reason that we're talking about TripAdvisor is the tourism team is actually advertising Clay County on TripAdvisor. So the greater your presence is on TripAdvisor, the greater the destination presence is, and the more visibility your business will get. 
So just know that that's, so from a listing perspective, it's just great to check your listing. So I just wanted to add that because not everybody knows where we're advertising. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kim. No, that's great. <clears throat> okay, so once you have claimed uh, your business across these platforms, uh, you're going to have access to the tools uh, to keep your information up to date. Um, and these five fundamentals really apply across the board, but we're really going to focus in on the Google platform uh, here because it is the most influential. So, five things we need to uh, prioritize when we're managing our profiles. Uh, the first is keeping your hours up to date. Hours is hands down the most uh, commonly searched uh, item about a business. I, I, you do it yourself every day. Is it open tonight? When does it open tomorrow? What time do they close? All those sorts of questions. Or uh, there's been over a 300% uh, uh, increase in searches for things like open now or open now near me uh, in uh, search results. Number one frustration I hear out of customers is it said it was open on Google and I got there and it was closed. <laughs> Um, really, can, and most uh, customers won't come back, won't try again, uh, if that is their uh, experience. The other thing we're starting to see on Google and on some of the other platforms are some indicators about how long it's been since the business has updated that information. Uh, Google just added this recently. Uh, you can see somebody say updated by the business an hour ago. It would say updated by the business six weeks ago. Um, those really inspire customer confidence. Okay, this was updated in the last month. It has a good chance of being accurate. Do you have a question? I do. So is there a recommended period of time that we should just like set a reminder every the first of every month? I want to just double check that page, update something to lift up that credibility? I do definitely encourage everyone to get into their Google business profile at least once a month and be sort of keeping house. Um, you can, this is a little bit of a hack, but even if your hours haven't changed, you could go in, change your closing time to four o'clock, save it, change it back to five o'clock and resave it, and it will trigger the thing that says you've updated your hours within the last month. Um, so, you can change your review. Does it also say that you've updated the business, or is that separate? Like, if you answer a Google review and thank you, we appreciate your feedback. Does that say that you've updated the page or the profile? Um, the question was if, if you've uh, responded to a review, does it show that you've updated your page? Um, there isn't a direct correlation between that. It will show in the review. It will show your response, and it will have a date on it. Um, but there's not like a flag anywhere in the listing uh, that says that you've responded to a review um, lately. Um, so keeping those, oh, yes, I'm annoying. No, <laughs> um, I work in the healthcare industry, so our administration offices are open a certain period of time, but our healthcare floors are open 24 hours a day. Is there the availability to do kind of a two-line thing? I haven't figured that out if there is. So for that particular industry, that's going to be a little difficult. Um, you probably want to have it set at the hours that you, you want people to uh, come in there. What I recommended with folks with special circumstances around hours is trying to make sure in your description, you kind of leave that description with, but this is open 24 hours. Um, I'll also talk about a feature called posts, which allows you to post updates into your listing, and so you can. Sh there's a couple other ways you can share um, that information. Um, when we just keep our regular hours uh, up to date, um, now again, we're looking in that search engine results page, uh, this little dialogue here. There's a button here that says edit profile, uh, and that's going to bring up a, a menu uh, where we want to choose business information. And hours, you can see about and contact and location. We want the hours tab here. Uh, and this main business hours area is where we are going to put our regular weekly or day of the week uh, hours. Uh, certainly keeping them up to date if they change uh, seasonally uh, for there. 
Uh, now, to your point, there are a, a few options where I can set separate hours for other things, but they grew out of COVID. They are very um, restaurant heavy focused. <coughs> things like when takeout is delivered is available, when senior hours are available. Um, you might be able to use this one called online service hours and put set that at 24, um, but most of our kind of restaurant uh, heavy, but if that applies to you and you have different hours for these kinds of services, you can narrow those uh, in that way. Now, there's a third way to manage off, uh, hours. You can actually put in specific dates and put hours in for those specific dates. If you really wanted to, you could do it for 365 days out of the year. Um, most people don't do that. Um, but you will periodically get these emails from Google as we approach major holidays uh, asking about, hey, uh, what are your hours on the 4th of July? Don't ignore those emails. Uh, and always make a point to go in and put in your hours for the major holidays by date. Uh, even if they are exactly the same as your hours every other day of the week. And it's because of the little, the little indicator here. Um, the customer confidence piece of this. If um, I don't go in for the 4th of July or Easter and update my hours, when the customer sees my business profile, they're going to see this little note here that says hours may be different or 4th of July may impact these hours. But if I do go in there and put in my hours for the 4th of July, this is going to be green and it's going to say confirmed by the business. And just that little tick of confidence can really make the difference of whether somebody rolls the dice to go somewhere, whether they know it's open or, or they have some doubts. Um, this is also a tool for special circumstances. Uh, God forbid we have hurricanes or other weather instances where we need to close for a day or two or an afternoon. Uh, if you have a special event that you need to uh, open late or close early, you can go in and put those hours in for a specific date uh, and, and address those um, specifically. So folks were using this a lot during COVID when they were closed or had erratic hours um, for those, those times. Uh, so the second thing we're going to talk about is choosing categories for uh, your business. And this is the relevance influencer in what shows up in the local path. Um, one of the things Google is looking for is how closely your business matches exactly what that consumer was searching for. And one of the ways we can do that is with categories. Um, now, every single one of these platforms is going to require a primary category for your business. You're going to have to pick one that is what you primarily are. Um, but uh, most of these platforms, and Google in particular, will allow you to have additional subcategories for your business. And that's where we can really dial in additional relevance for our business to searches. Um, so use the restaurant industry as an example here. I may be a fine dining restaurant. But I may also be a seafood restaurant, steak restaurant, organic restaurant, a lunch restaurant, a dinner restaurant. A, there are uh, literally 4,000 uh, categories available in Google. Um, they are set. You can't make up your own category because you can only imagine what would happen on a worldwide basis if people were making up categories. Um, but Google does review them every year, take some away, add some. Um, and so it's worth getting in there and um, searching for things that you think people might uh, associate with you or, or is relevant uh, to your business. There's a lot in there. A cat hostel. What is a cat hostel? I don't know a cat's backpack, but it's, it's a thing. Um, so uh, again, we're editing this uh, in the edit profile. Um, you get this option for business category uh, under business information. Uh, and you can put in up to nine more categories for your business. Um, the other thing to know, uh, the other thing to know is that there's a direct correlation between the categories you choose and what amenities you can also choose from. Different categories have different sets of amenities. 
So sometimes choosing additional categories also opens up additional amenities that we can choose. So for example, in the lodging industry, I may be a hotel, but if I also mark myself as an event venue or a wedding venue, I get a whole new slew of uh, amenities that I can apply to my location because I'm also an event venue or a wedding venue. Question. Most of these are for businesses, understand that, but for a once a year event, um, the, the stuff in here for, for an event that we have you know, once and done kind of thing. So if you follow Google's terms of service, an event is not supposed to be able to have a Google business profile mm -hmm. as an event. I have seen them in there. Uh, and particularly annual events who have like an operating office that has a physical address. That everything, everything in Google has to be tied to a physical address because it's all based on Google Maps. Um, so uh, some big annual events also have an office, and so I've seen locations claim that office, but that's usually not the venue. Um, that being said, if you look up the Miami Boat Show in Google Maps, you're going to be able to scroll in there and see it. So I've, I've seen people create it and claim it and do it, but if you read the terms and conditions, you're not supposed to be able to. Um, and so then as you get into things like categories and amenities, you're not gonna find things that apply. Um, really the best thing to do with your event uh, is uh, m making sure that your um, event is has solid listings across everywhere that lists events. Um, because what Google does is something, I'll, I'll use your fairgrounds as an example, and I'm totally guessing here, I haven't looked at your listing. Um, but what uh, Google will tend to do with an event venue is sometimes uh, scrape events that are online, like listed on the newspaper website or the DMO website that have that venue listed as its location and it will list upcoming events in the Google block for that venue. Um, and if you click on that event, it's actually going to move to one of those listings. Um, so keeping, making sure there's strong listings across your major uh, you know, local uh, things like Eventbrite, but then newspaper, DMO, other places like that. And, and also, I think, Stan, um, specifically for y'all and for events, you're usually tied to a nonprofit organization. We are one. Yes. So I think your nonprofit organization should have a Google My Business page. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are a business. Yes. So that, that can be done, too. It, it, it really mostly becomes a, a, like, there's usually a disconnect between where the business is run and where that venue is. We're kind of limited to where we can take your tanks. Okay. I, I can see that. I, well, I'll be very interested to see if there's a tank related um, category out of the four. They, uh, they have cat hostel. I mean, there's got to be something in there. Military, of course. Okay, so as I said, hand in hand with uh, categories are your attributes. Um, and amenities, they're called different things, but these also really help to build out the content that's in your Google business profile. Uh, again, these vary by what kind of business you are, um, but uh, things like uh, stores will have like in-store shopping or pickup featured. Um, most places are still having some sort of health and safety call out uh, included in their listing. Um, uh, things like uh, women-owned businesses, in dining, takeout, etc. These are all attributes that you can choose from uh, in the Google platform for your business. Um, this is found, again, under the business information. Uh, it actually shows up under more. Um, and then you're going to see lists. They're, they're grouped into categories like accessibility. And uh, again, they vary by whether what type of business you are. Um, you'll see you have the option to uh, select uh, attributes and amenities that apply to your location. You also have the ability to set a negative 
um, for these amenities. And sometimes that can be just as important as saying you have something to say that you don't have something. Uh, in particular, things like pets being welcome. Um, you know, it, the difference between it doesn't say and so maybe versus it saying, no, I'm sorry, they're not welcome here, or yes, they are, and provide a definitive answer. Also true with things like family friendly. I mean, if you're a high-end fine dining restaurant and it's not a place you want to bring kids, it's okay to like set that expectation up front. You'll actually get less customer complaints on the other end. Um, Again, uh, this is this applies across all of the platforms. Um, there are also, depending on the platform, um, various diversity attributes that you can set for your business. Things like women-led, black-owned, uh, Latino-owned, uh, are all things that you can uh, set in your profile uh, as well. Um, so let's move into photography. Uh, we're in the travel and tourism industry. We know our customers really are making decisions based on imagery, and that photos are going to play a key part in how they make decisions about where they're going to go uh, and what they are going to do. Uh, but to back it up with research, uh, this was a study done by Bright Local, and they found that businesses that had more than 100 images in their Google listing photo gallery were showing up almost uh, 300 times more frequently than those with less photography. Um, so really a big uh, difference in, in those with an awful lot of photos in there. Uh, now our organization manages the Google business profile for a number of hotels, restaurants, uh, our hospitality clients. And one of the things that we have found is if we are consistently uploading four or five photos every month to our Google business profile, that listing is getting between a 10 and a 30 percent uh, more exposure, um, more visibility in search and maps than those who um, are not. Uh, and we think that is that the Google algorithm is using that activity as an indicator that the, the business is really active and uh, has a lot of, of customer interest. Any question back there? So that's not that is that are uploaded by your customers, that is specifically that you're uploading on behalf of your customers. Yes, photos uploaded by uh, the business. Although, although I do think having uh, a lot of customer photos figures into that algorithm uh, as well. You know, it's, it's sort of an indicator that you know, people are here and they're enjoying things. Yeah, I've yeah, noticed this actually makes a difference putting in photos. Mm -hmm. um, I've read somewhere that if you're your photos have a thing called alt text mm -hmm. that it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. But I have a hard time getting the photo to maintain that alt text when I stick it into Google, into Google Business Site. Mm -hmm. It seems to strip it out or something. So there's sort of two things going on here. Um, with your Google Business Profile photos that you upload, um, mm -hmm. you the metadata in a photo can have a description. Not all the platforms hold on to it. Right. One of the things we do is um, actually make the file name of the image something specific, right. like name of your business, you know, lobster bisque.jpg. Right. Um, that's a way to put keywords into right. your photo. Um, so if I'm doing that, do I need to mess with this whole data thing? Or just the alt data really more applies to photos you're going to put on your website that Google is going to crawl because alt is is actually in the HTML right. for the image. So if you're putting an image on your website, it's SEO, search engine optimization best practice to put um, an alt and a description of the image in the HTML code. But that's different than your business profile. That's website HTML. Thank you. So we allow people to add photos to our business page, but not all the photos do we want to have shown. Just went up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to tell you that. Um, <laughs> because that, we hear that quite a bit too. Uh, when we, uh, some of them should never be shown anywhere. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> should have ever been taken. So I'll um, I'll tell you my funny Thank story. I'll, I'll tell you my funny story now. Actually, um, I, I wish I had this image in the slide, but our team, having done all these audits for all these destinations, one of the things we do is look in the photo galleries of top attractions. We keep a little folder of some of the greatest hits uh, of images that we have found in photo galleries, and they are hilarious. I mean, I've got one of like Batman on a unicycle being chased by a guy in a Superman costume with a ukulele. Uh, I'm not talking about that. You know, stuffed cats, stuffed alligators, uh, dead horse on a bike. It's it's really interesting. So. A couple of years ago, I had coffee mugs made for my team with a collage of a bunch of these photos on the coffee mug. Um, and so there are eight of us, and I got my eight coffee mugs. But one of the coffee mugs was a picture of a sweet little family with a baby, and not one of my weird collages. So that Christmas, sweet family with a baby must have gotten one of our <laughs> mugs. <laughs> I must really wonder <laughs> what the widows we are. Face on that So one of the things we get asked a lot is, uh, what photos should I upload? What should they be? And this is one of the things I like to call out to all of us who are in business marketing, because what Google wants in a photo versus what we think we want a photo are not always 100% the same thing. Google's priority is for photography to be informative. If I don't know your place, does the photo give me scope and scale and context of your location? So for example, if I own an art gallery, having a photo of the gallery experience versus a picture of a single painting is more what Google would want uh, to see. We always think we want to lead with attractive photography. And, and attractive still matters. It's still like the number two influencer there. You know, bright colors, good contrast, straight lines and focus, all that kind of thing still matters. But it's informative, informative photos that are a priority for Google. Recency also matters uh, with photography. I mentioned how it seems like the algorithm is taking into account um, how long it's been since those photos were uploaded. One of, the, one of the things I see businesses do is when they first claim their Google business profile, you probably have five or six photos, they're the best photos of your location that you use in all your marketing. And you go in and you upload those, and two years later, those are the only five photos you still have uploaded to your profile. Um, and that doesn't really address that recency, because um, your customers want to know what the place looks like now, not what it looked like five years ago. Um, a real life example here, these are both photos of the Branson Ferris wheel. Um, the one on the left is a great photo, it's informative, I can read the name, it's bright, colorful, looks like fun. Uh, I call the one on the right the Scooby-Doo Ferris wheel. Uh, it's a little off kilter, could be abandoned. Uh, doesn't necessarily look like it is open or fun. Um, this is a real world experiment. This is the exact same plate of food taken, uploaded to a business profile at the same time. Um, the nicely framed, well done photo uh, on the left receives 10 times more views than the ones on the right, which really does sort of look like raw fish. <clears throat> a few other photography best practices. First and foremost, make sure you're only uploading photos that you know you have the rights to. Uh, the last thing you want is to have an angry photographer after you for using a photo uh, that belongs to them. Uh, upload the highest resolution photo you have available, even if it's a 4K photo. Google will figure out how to scale it down. The higher quality you put in, the higher quality comes out at the other end. Um, this isn't Instagram. Don't use filters, black and white, sepia tone. Um, don't ghost a logo over anything. Put your logo or any other text over the photo. Um, and don't go crazy with seasonal images. It's not necessarily bad to have a couple, uh, you know, Christmas photos, Halloween photos, but don't inundate your photo gallery with things that aren't the representation of what uh, the location typically looks like. A um, few other things, keeping vertical and horizontal lines straight, that's a personal pet peeve uh, of mine, but I'm married to a photographer, so that could be uh, part of it. Um, 
primarily upload horizontal images. If you look on the Google platform, most of what it ever uses are horizontally based images. Sometimes they're cropped to a square, uh, a la Instagram. Um, and here's a counterintuitive one for all of us who are marketers. Google wants to see our spaces without people in them. They want that sense of scale and scope. Um, and so it is preferred, a picture like this on the bottom, it would be Google's preference of an interior of a restaurant space versus people. Uh, also stay aware of personally identifiable information. You really want to avoid having people's faces in those photos unless you know you have their permission uh, to do that. A crowd photo in an event. As long as, as, long as you're just showing a, a crowd, that's that's really usually okay. There, there's some law around like how far out you need to be to shoot a crowd, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Well, pretty far to get the crowd, so. Yeah, exactly. In Florida, if you're on a public roadway or sidewalk, you're fair game. Yeah, yeah technically. You, you, I mean, you just judge it based on, you know, if they signed up for your event and signed a waiver and all that, you're, I always try to sneak in a photo sentence in there that automatically makes it where we can use their pictures for anything. Is there a question about that? Yeah, I can understand this if it's a building or a room, but if it's an activity that your business is, for instance, sailing mm -hmm. on a boat, and well, yeah. certainly you want to have people on there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> where the trouble is. <laughs> yes, uh, just if you're, if you're using customer in that photo, um, making sure that you either have a release or have their permission really? to yeah. use uh, their photo. Honestly, the Google police are not going to come after you. They don't care. Well, I'm going to be in jail for years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really know that they have anyone policing it, but if you read, again, if you read the terms and conditions around photography, um, they the post out to worry about. Well, and, and if they've signed up to do an activity like that with you, um, a lot of folks just sort of have in their, like, and we might take your photo and use it in things, okay. mm -hmm. like oh. in their small print. Yeah. And can't you also take the photo from the back? Yes, I, I, I don't have it in this deck, but I do have a, one that is like a, a bar space, and there are people in it, but they're all, these backs of heads is another way to get around that as well. Uh, okay, to your question, flagging photos, because uh, we cannot stop Google from allowing uh, customers to be able to upload photos and tag our location in them. Uh, any Google user uh, can do so, and that's where we get some really exciting imagery sometimes. Um, there is a way, though, to flag photos to be removed. Um, so in if you're in the desktop uh, area, it does filter them down by customer. But you can even just look at your gallery online. And in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little flag icon. Um, or sometimes over, over in this area, there's a little drop-down um, either that says report a photo. Either one is going to bring you to this dialogue that says this photo should be removed. Uh, and it can be things like obscenity and uh, spam, but there's also options here just simply that it's poor quality. Um, or another situation we see sometimes is that it's not a photo of this place. Like I accidentally tagged it and it's the, it's the restaurant across the street. Or, um, you know, I've seen things from Las Vegas, New Mexico that has photos from Las Vegas, Nevada and name swaps and things uh, like that. So that's how you can uh, address that. Uh, next, I want to talk about posting updates. If, if I could um, be the champion for anything, it would be to get more businesses to use Google Posts on a regular basis. It's like free advertising. Uh, a post is going to show in your Google business profile everywhere uh, that it shows up in Google products. Um, and that's a lot of organic visibility, and it's absolutely free. You also have 100% control of where that post links to, um, and you can update them on a frequent basis. Uh, it used to be they expired in seven days, then they didn't expire at all, and Google just announced the day before yesterday that now they're going to expire after six months, which is probably fine because it's 
old news. It's really meant to be updates, current information. Uh, originally, uh, hoteliers and lodging properties could not use posts, uh, and that actually changed in the past year. Um, so now lodging properties can uh, post events and updates. Um, the only thing accommodations can't do is special offers. And without getting into the long story, that has to do with the integration of booking and how they don't want you doing offers with booking.com doesn't happen. It's a long story. But they do have posts now, which is good. Uh, it's also good because posts, uh, which Google tends to call updates, are starting to show up in more places in Google products. So if you have the Google app, Maps app on your phone right now, uh, and you open it and swipe up this location, uh, it's going to say latest, latest in the area. Uh, or there's a button uh, in the app that says, um, I forget, it's something like updates, explore. There's this little button here that says explore. Uh, and that's going to look at my location and give me posts from businesses in the community, uh, news articles from local media outlets, and uh, customer reviews, particularly customer reviews where they have uploaded a photo, get featured in this. So if you are adding a post or your customers are writing uh, reviews and uploading a photo with it, um, that may be a part of the content of what someone's going to see in your area when they're just sort of flipping through this explore content. Um, so that's some additional visibility uh, for posts. Again, totally free. Um, some best practices here. Uh, use an attention-grabbing photo uh, in your post. Um, things that are successful in Instagram often do well here because it's the same square format. You can write up to a 300 word description for your post. I don't know why you want to be that lengthy, but you can. Um, try to focus that message in on your first 85 to 100 characters, because that's the piece that people are going to be able to see before they have to click, like learn more, or open this up to read the rest of it. Um, so get your headline out in the beginning there. Um, you do, again, have 100% control of where this links to. So it can be a registration page, a ticket purchasing page, your website, your Facebook page, uh, the Tourism Bureau's website, wherever you want to link it. Uh, if you're in the habit of using Google Campaign Tracking Codes with your online advertising, uh, you can put Google Campaign Tracking Codes in these links if you're pointing it to your website. Um, and you'll be able to see the traffic to your website from the posts. Um, from a timing standpoint, uh, don't wait until the end of the week uh, to post about what's happening this weekend. Uh, we all start dreaming about what we're doing this weekend by Tuesday at the latest. Um, so uh, go ahead and post those events early in the week. Uh, reviews and online uh, reputation. Uh, one of the things I also try to emphasize uh, with businesses is the importance of monitoring and responding to your reviews. Uh, this is a bright local survey of the most frequently used platforms for local business reviews with Google, Yelp, and Facebook uh, leading the pack. Uh, and you can see that in between 2020 and 2021, um, Google jumped uh, up to from 67% to 81% uh, of being the place that folks are going for reviews. Uh, we did our own survey uh, in a recent study and asked about the trustworthiness uh, of reviews from a customer perspective. Uh, and Google led the pack there with just over 60% saying that Google reviews are usually or always trustworthy. Uh, followed by TripAdvisor, Apple Maps, and Facebook being uh, the least considered trustworthy source uh, of their names. Because <laughs> I don't go crazy. <laughs> um, on Google, this is good news for business. 81% uh, of reviews um, made on Google are four star or higher. Uh, only less than 4% are one-star reviews. So most customers are providing positive feedback uh, on the Google platform. Uh, the median rating for business is 4.4 stars. 
Um, and that's good because there are a lot of folks out there who won't uh, feature in a business that isn't four stars uh, or higher. Um, Responding, uh, you know, so those reviews are going to show up directly in your profile, uh, and those are the source of the star rating for your business. Uh, you will get a lot of reviews that don't have a review and only have a star rating, um, and those factor in uh, as well. And I know responding to reviews is very time consuming, and none of us have any of that. Um, but even a little bit can make a big difference. Uh, this was a study done by Uberall, and they compared businesses who were responding uh, to 30% um, who were looking at responding to 10% of their reviews, compared them to folks that were responding to 30% of reviews. So folks who are responding to 1 in 10 versus those who are responding to 3 out of 10 they had an 80% boost in conversions just by being just by responding to three out of ten of the last reviews. Just that small uh, uh, engagement can create impact, and it's frequently enough that your potential customers are going to see your responses and have that good impression of your business that you are paying attention and you're cognizant in. Responding to uh, your customers. Um, in the um, Google management tool, this is under the, the customers tab here, uh, and that's going to give you the ability to respond to write a response uh, directly to that review um, and filter. You can also filter these by those you've responded to, which ones were recent, which ones were uh, poor or positive. To get to that, you got to dig through your phone and push a bunch of buttons to get to that. And I found people don't like doing that. So I found this link where you can send them a link and say, hey, you do a win at company. And they hit that link, the stars are right there. All they got to do is hit it and then write what they want. But they need to have a button for the photo because you want to get them to put that photo in there. So you don't have to do that there. Yeah, they used to have something. Yes. <laughs> With the old system, it had a photo button. And the writing, all one thing, no ads, no garbage. Yeah, if you look at the search engine results page, uh, photo and review, the two buttons are next to each other. But um, they used to have something called a short link that you could make a shortened URL that would take you directly to reviews. And for some reason, they got rid of it. They left off the photo button. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> so you're saying that link is still there? You you have to, I can't remember how to find it, but just look it up on the internet. It, it, there's a little thing from Google support mm -hmm. paragraph that tells you how to request this link. And it creates a link and then you just send it to the people you want to give you a review. And all they got to do is click it. There's no button. It's just right there in their face. All they got to do is hit that five star thing and say, Great job, Tom, or whatever. And send it. Can you have any, um, <coughs> any incentives or any program, any ideas on you know, getting customers to, to add photos or do reviews? Uh, it's really getting the messaging out there um, and your cards here. Uh, are a great opportunity. Um, I don't know if you want to tell them a little bit about yeah, this real quick. No, um, the tourism team has paid, has bought you and is providing you business cards to request reviews. So you can, you know, when your customer comes on, you know, on site, you can hand that to them. <coughs> but I also kind of want you to think outside the box a little bit and kind of incentivize that. I mean, this is just a friendly reminder, and it's generic. It's not unique to your business because we're providing it to Clay County tourism-related businesses. But you know, how can you do it like a little social media campaign where you can invite people to add, you well, know, you, you definitely your can photos, get the message out there. Um, the shortened URL uh, that goes directly to you—they <coughs> don't make it as easy as it used to, but you can actually like copy that link and put it into like a bit.ly URL shortener. 
Um, you do want to be a little careful around the idea of incentivizing because you don't um, technically terms and conditions why you shouldn't be giving away anything. Um, but one of the, one of the in this uh, particular deck, one of the great things you can do with positive reviews too is encourage folks to come back and try something else. Okay, if you really liked, you know, the shrimp, come back for the lobster. Mm -hmm. um, but um, definitely any way you can get that out here. So cards like this, the, the signs in the windows, email follow-ups, social media follow-ups um, are all good ways to uh, encourage those uh, customer reviews. I have a, a little suggestion to you that question. On my own business cards, I've got a QR code that links to our Google reviews mm -hmm. so that they can not only add a review, but read the other reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get rewards points in their reward account. Yes, QR, I, I should have said that too. QR codes is a great way to, I've seen places with tabletops and various things around yeah, the lobby. Yeah, we have right by our register. We put on it like, yeah, we know what you're saying. But like, we appreciate it. And we can mm -hmm. add little QR codes. Sometimes people send their scan and leave a review right there. Mm -hmm. And then if not, we always give out our business cards. So I mm -hmm. as well. Yes, putting those QR codes out there is a great uh, way to do that. Um, on the Yelp platform, I just wanted to call out a slightly different scheme uh, of the, in the Yelp platform. Uh, about 68% of their ratings are four or five star. They have a much higher instance of poor ratings. Uh, and again, Yelp is very heavily in the restaurant space. Uh, another thing to keep in mind about Yelp is they very explicitly say, do not ask for a Yelp review. Uh, and their algorithms are designed to choose what they call recommended reviews. So not every review that gets posted on your Yelp profile shows up in your profile. It's only what they decide to be recommended reviews. And they say that their algorithms are designed to know which ones have been asked for. And they don't surface those. Um, they say their software actively targets reviews that have been solicited. Um, so that's very different than Google and TripAdvisor, who are very much to encourage businesses to encourage their customers to write reviews. Just uh, FYI. Uh, also, as it pertains to the Apple platform, uh, Yelp, Apple does not have its own review platform. Most of the time, they are scraping Yelp reviews into a business listing. Um, I've seen TripAdvisor and a couple other sources show up in there as well. Uh, but there is no Apple reviews uh, for you to keep an eye on. There. Um, TripAdvisor research says that review factors make up three of the four key drivers of what creates uh, traveler engagement with the TripAdvisor listing, including the total number of reviews, the manage that management is responding to reviews in the last year, uh, and the total number of reviews uh, in the last year. Um, <clears throat> TripAdvisor is unique in that it has its popularity ranking. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that. XYZ is the number one or the number five restaurant or attraction uh, in the area. It is very specific to their platform, and it's also uh, a result of not only how, how your business is performing, but how the businesses around you are performing. Um, so it's, it's also your standing against other businesses. So you may be doing fine, but if somebody up the street has just started knocking it out of the park with the reviews, it can impact where you show up in that list. Um, regardless of what you are doing uh, yourself. Uh, that ranking is based on the quality, quantity, and recency of your TripAdvisor uh, reviews of both your business and the businesses around you. Um, popularity ranking on TripAdvisor is updated every single day. Um, having a commercial relationship with TripAdvisor, buying any sort of advertising or enhancement does not impact. Um, popularity ranking and as well as um, the fact that you are responding to reviews uh, does not impact your popularity ranking. So those were the five uh, key things uh, for you to be thinking about uh, with your, your Google business profile as well as other platforms. Uh, first and foremost, making sure your hours are up to date. Choosing as many um, categories as possible and attributes that are relevant to your business so that you match with as many uh, customer services or customer searches 
that you are relevant to. Uh, posting four, four, four photos a month can create a lift in your exposure. Uh, take advantage of posts and that free exposure and advertising, or not advertising, but exposure there. Uh, and responding to thir just 30% of your reviews can create uh, an 80% <coughs> lift in conversions. Uh, again, please feel free to set up uh, a time with our team if you have uh, additional questions or want to walk through the planning process or, or some other issue you may be having. Um, with uh, your Google Club um, listing or, or anything else here, we are happy to help you. Can we go somewhere for this interview or it's not online? Or? It's, a, it's a Zoom call. Oh, okay. uh, that will give you a link to something called Calendly, which will give you days and times that our team is available. And, and when you sign up for one, it will send you a Zoom link. And where, do I go to some website to put that in? Um, so if you scan that QR code, you should get a link to the Calendly to, um, yeah. to, um, <laughs> <laughs> My phone's not that smart. Maybe I'm not. And I think Kimberly's team will be following up this event with a link to via email to everybody too. Can we get a copy of your slides? Yes. My hands all perfect. Yes, and uh, they've also uh, recorded it today. So. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, I went a little long there, but I, I hope it was helpful for, for everyone. Uh, yeah. Danielle, and Kim, thank you so much for being here with us and working with us on the Google, Pro the Google Audit project. Um, Y'all, we're going to be following up with many of you to just review that, the findings from that audit um, for your business, just to make sure everything's good. Um, we have these business cards for you right out here. So if you want them for your, for your business, um, Explore Clay has them for you so that you can encourage people to leave reviews for your business free of charge to you. Um, we are doing lots of advertising and marketing throughout the region. Um, we've got some new research tools happen, um, that we're using to make sure that we're marketing to the right people and bringing the right people to your business. So we are very excited about the things that are happening. We're working on another program for you all for, as business owners. Um, if we're probably the fall, October, November timeframe, where we'll talk a little bit more about social influencers and how to work with them. So stay tuned for that. Um, we are here to help you as um, marketers um, and business owners. Um, the tourism team is here to help. So um, reach out to Connor, Matthews, or myself. And we're, um, we just thank you all for what you, do, what you do every day. You all are the ones with the direct relationships with, and impact with the customer. And we can't do what we do to market our destination without you delivering the great experience. So thank you for what you do every day. And um, that's all that I have, unless you all have any other questions. Where will this video be? That's a great question, Dan. I'm so glad you asked. Um, so this video will be on the county's website, which is claycountygov.com. In the uh, community section, there is a hospitality and tourism that has um, all of our research, the tourism budget, the grant information for events, all of that information is there. This recorded um, session will be there as a resource. Um, we will also send out the link to you all as a follow-up so that you can go just click and be directly linked there. Okay, so tell all your friends about the great tourism program that you attended today. And um, we're, like I said, we're here to help businesses grow. And um, thank you all for being here today and taking your time to, to learn about the online exposure um, that you can have. And thanks again, Tim.